Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian. Today I'm going to do a Dutch pour, but I'm just going to make a, uh, a canvas with just like primary colors. So I'm going to use um, a couple of different shades of blue, red, yellow, orange. Um, I had to, we, um, I was part of a collaboration with four other artists that I uh, posted on June 20th. And so this piece was kind of like a tester piece. So I was just playing around with colors. Uh, it came out beautiful. I really, really loved it, but I wanted something different for our collaboration piece. So this is what I um, came up with and I hope you enjoy it. So, um, I'll get you down onto the canvas and I'll show you the colors and then we'll go ahead and start spreading everything out. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so what I've got today is a 15 by 30 canvas. And today is gonna be the first time I'm pouring on my altered tables. So. I cut about three inches off the legs of my table because my table was so far up here. So if I needed to bend over and do anything, I couldn't reach my pieces. So I, uh, this is my first pour on this. So um, there's a couple of things that's going on with the paint. So um, if you are a follower of mine, I, and you'll probably know that I use Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. I get it from Michaels. Um, it's an amazing product. It's just white and it works well. However, something's happened with the formulation from Artist Loft and it's creating these really small cells, white cells, whenever people do pores. And I'm noticing that in mine well, as well. So what I did today, um, I normally mix my paint with 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of paint and 35 grams of water. And we think the issue with the getting the mini white cells from the white is putting water with the formulation. So um, I don't know if Artist Loft has changed the formula on how they make their white. So um, Canela Sirocco has been playing with the, her formula. And so she did a tester with no water. She just did 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of white and poured it out. And what do you know? Everything turned out just like normal. The problem is, is the white is so thick. So she then tried to add a little bit of water to it. She did get the white cells. However, the white cells were not as bad. So what I did is I did a new concoction today, 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of paint, and then I did 30 total grams of water. So in this little jar here, um, let me get my calculations just to give you an idea of what I did. So, I've got 400 grams of Floetrol, 200 grams of white paint, and then I only have 30 grams of water in this jug. So it's still thick. However, I think it's gonna work. We won't get the cells. And then of course my colors that I'm gonna use on top of the white is going to be Deco Art Metallic Ice Blue, Amsterdam's Pyrrole Red, Amsterdam's titanium white, just to break up the red and the yellow so I don't get too much green because the next color is going to be Artist Loft Metallic Lemon Yellow. Deco Art 24 Karat Gold, I love this color. We got Liquitex Cadmium Orange and the best color in the world, Pebio's Iridescent Blue Green. All right, so let's get started. I'll pop this top. I just mixed this white a little while ago, probably like 35 minutes ago. So it's been sitting for just a little bit of time, not much. And, um, you know, let's see what we can get out of this new mixture. Got my canvas leveled. I had to use some popsicle sticks, but uh, for the most part, my tables are nice and level as well. Um, 
got carpet in here in my studio and so we are going to rip up the carpet and put plank flooring down but until then i'm always going to be a little on level because of the carpet so all right let's blow this out now this is not going to blow very easily like normal so i'm going to have to probably put this on medium instead of low we'll see So I think, I don't know, if we don't fix this mixture, then I'm going to have to, I don't know, maybe start putting the paint on with this, with smearing it with a spatula maybe, because um, that was not easy. All right, I'm going to use my white. Now, this is my regular white that I've already had mixed up, so I'm going to use that just to touch up my sides. Got a lot of air bubbles here. Let's torch this. So while I started out making this video, I got a phone call from my neighbor and asked me if I was home. What's this in my paint? They said, yes, I'm home. I'm actually downstairs getting ready to record a video. I was folding up some laundry and then setting all the canvas and everything up and she said your dogs two of your dogs are not in your yard they're down the street at the neighbor's house and what see we have an electric fence in the ground and the dogs wear a collar so if they go outside they get a little shock and they come back inside well Two of my dogs did not have their collars on today because I didn't put them on them. We have three dogs, three collars. My little pup, she's not really a pup, she's one years old. Wow, there's a lot of air bubbles in here. Uh, she chewed through her collar. So now I need to buy a new one. And uh, <laughs> so the other two didn't have theirs on because they've they're three years old and two years old. So they're used to where the fence is. And for whatever reason, they decided just to venture on out because I wasn't paying attention. So the moral of the story is make sure you watch the animals. I'm a good da dog daddy or doggy daddy. Yeah, I'm a good doggy daddy. But if they're upstairs and I'm downstairs, I've got to pay more attention, I guess. All right, so I think I'm going to go up this way. And then, like I said, a branch this way and then a branch up that way. Whoa, what's up with this stuff in the paint here? Got hair. All right, let's go. Go that way with that. Here, down there. Okay, so this paint is thick for sure because this paint is laying right on the top, which is great. All right. Let's get some red here. Pyro red. Gotta say, these colors also, while they are beautiful colors, are kind of hard to work with. Ooh, my red is sinking right into my blue. Now, mind you, my colors are still mixed with the old uh, mixture, 80, 40, 35. That's my mixture for my paints, and that's my mixture for my base. But with this Artist Loft issue, this white today is much thicker. So these paints are a lot thinner. 
Wow, this white, or this yellow, is really gonna mix in with the blue. Add a little bit more white here. I think I'm gonna go very sparingly with the yellow here. Now this is gonna create green, because what? Yellow and blue make green. All right, so 24 karat gold. Now, I don't know if many of you know about that, about gold, but it will eat up the paint. So you want to be very sparingly when you add gold. Next is the orange. Go. And the final color, my favorite, iridescent blue green. Now I want this one to really be vibrant in the piece. So I am gonna make sure I add a little bit more. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. Let's torch this for some air bubbles. All right. Kind of looks like a Y. Hmm. I wonder if I should maybe do, no, I'm gonna do. Okay guys, wish me luck. I think I'm going to start here down. All right, so I've got a lot of paint on here, but I didn't get the tiny little cells that I thought I was gonna get, so that's good. But definitely got a lot of paint still left, so we definitely need to mess with the composition here. that side to go off the side there I personally love it when colors go over the side it just kind of looks nice okay
All right, I think we're good here. We got some negative space here, got negative space here. It's flowing off the corners. I like this lot. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'll take you down off the tripod and I'll bring you in for a closer look. Be right back. Okay, so I still need to do a little torching just to make sure I've got all the air bubbles out of this because this, like I said, this white paint is so thick. And then I'm gonna to need to scrape my bottom there. Not my bottom, but the bottom edge of my canvas. Okay, let's keep it PG. Um, yeah, all the drips. So I'll go, I'll do that off camera, but let me just bring you in and let you see the composition. And man, this really is a beautiful piece. I was really scared with these colors and the blue going down first really um, makes all the other colors pop because you get the subtle hint of the blue, but you're really seeing all the other colors kind of shine through. Like there wasn't a lot of muddy mixing. Um, you got some purple looking color because of the blue and the red, um, even though blue red doesn't technically make purple. Um, but as you can see, I got some little white cells, but that's normal. That's okay. I, that I'm okay with. I just don't like it when my paint recedes and I lose all of my color. So here is the wet result. And as soon as it's dry, I'll get it up on the wall, I'll show you the dry result. Okay, everyone, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. All right, everyone, here is the dried result. This really turned out nice. I love the colors. It was very simple since it was just mainly primary colors. So you got a lot of um, um, what I call bleeding. So, you know, you got the yellows and blues. It kind of made some greens. Um, and some of the darker blues look like they might have gotten a little muddy towards the bottom. I'll show you. Let's zoom in here. Let's start up here on the left side. I love the cells in this, the lacing. Beautiful. Composition really turned out nice. So down here in the bottom, you can start to see, you know, where the red and the blue, you know, and the it just red and it just kind of starts to to muddy up a little bit but it's not too bad i mean it happens so i did see these clusters of white cells that's pretty sure where the white and the artist loft starts coming in adding water to that uh artist loft is creating some unwanted white cells but over here it's not bad I couldn't be happier with this though it's a beautiful beautiful piece and once I get the crystal resin on this everything's gonna really come back to life it's gonna look amazing all right, everyone. So as always, my pieces are available for sale. You can email me directly at Brian's Upper Valley Artistry at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. That'll let you know when I do post a new video. All right, everyone. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.